All right, well, uh, new week, new opportunity, Iron Bowl week, and that's our focus is on Alabama. And I'll get into that here in just a minute. Uh, but I thought the guys came back on Sunday. We had a chance to assess what happened in the South Carolina game and learn from that and then use that moving forward this week. And that's, that's really part of the process that we have every single week is uh, win or lose, you know, what did you learn? And taking that information and applying it to what we have to do moving forward um, and getting ourselves improved as the season continues. And this week is no different. Um, you know, we have this opportunity to be back at home. Um, it's going to be an opportunity for our seniors and guys that will play their, their last game here at Jordan-Hare and then uh, playing against a really good football team. You know, this, this game goes back all the way to 1893. And, and so, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of excitement about that. And, you know, as we look at Alabama, they're obviously a very good football team, um, extremely well coached. Coach Saban does a tremendous job with that program, with that team, and, and uh, has done that consistently year in and year out. <clears throat> um, offensively, you know, they're first in the league. And uh, Bryce Young, I got a chance to watch him play in high school, and he is uh, was a very good player then. Uh, has improved even more. You can see just the, the growth, maturity he's made through this season. Um, you know, his toughness, the way he's playing, and how he's got that offense um, moving and running and, and doing a lot of different things uh, that are very difficult for the defenses. So I've been very impressed with him. And you know, it's not just him. There's too many names to, to actually name, but the two wide receivers, Metchie and Williams, both guys are having tremendous years, um, very explosive players, and so that'll be a challenge for our secondary. Uh, physical also in the run game, you know, those guys play extremely hard. Brian Robinson, number four, their leading rusher, physical runner, um, plays extremely hard um, and, and does that consistently throughout the games. He's got 14 touchdowns this year um, because of that. Evan Neal, uh, their tackle, really their offensive line. He's he's one of the guys, um, Outland Trophy and Lombardi Award candidate right now. I and mean, this guy is um, extremely extremely physical um, and plays extremely hard. Obviously very talented, but you know the thing that stands out is is uh, you know the way these guys play and the consistency that they play with. And it's it's hard to do that week in and week out. <clears throat> um, defensively. Very strong up front, uh, front seven uh, was extremely good. Back end um, uh, moves really well, puts themselves in positions where they can make plays on the ball. They can make plays uh, if the the backs or receivers are able to get to them, um, and they tackle extremely well. They got six returning starters on that side of the ball. Uh, Will Anderson, one of their linebackers, um, Henry Toa Toa, uh the transfer from Tennessee. You know. Is a, Playing extremely well, he's got 84 tackles, uh, and Jordan Battle DB, and, and uh, again, you know, really everybody on that side of the ball has done a tremendous job. So, um, challenge for us is, you know, we have to play well, uh, offense and defensively. Uh, we've got to eliminate uh, the things that we can control as far as mistakes. Um, play, play our game, and, and go out there and uh, make sure that we're, we're taking care of the things that we need to. Um, within our schemes. Special teams wise, uh, again, very good. Um, you know, they continue to show up on special teams um, as being fast, physical, and, you know, a team that you got to play with great technique uh, and great effort against. So, uh, overall, um, just very impressed with watching now uh, more in detail uh, their performances against each team they played. And, you know, we're certainly excited about the opportunity to go out there and get ourselves ready for this week to play our best football of the year, which is always the goal every single game, and to stay focused on the things that we need to do for this team to be more successful. And, you know, I think our guys, you know, as we come out to practice on Tuesday, um, taking what we've learned from the season so far, we need to apply that. And that will show up. We'll put in, you know, a week's work, worth of work. Um, where you know we feel accomplished after each and every day, and uh, and hopefully the next day we're out there to prove ourselves again um, before we ever step on the field to play. So that's that's the mentality uh, that we have each and every day. That's really what the one and zero is. 
um, is having that identity as an individual and, and certainly as a team. Um, it is Thanksgiving week, so our schedule will be a little bit different. Um, so guys will have time to go celebrate uh, and be with family and give thanks on Thursday. Um, it won't affect much of what we're doing from a preparation standpoint. Um, and then ready to play on Saturday and, and, uh, and go out there and finish out this season uh, playing our best game of the season is the goal. So with that, questions. First question is Michael Gittens. <clears throat> Coach, this is your first Iron Bowl. Um, what's the primary message to the team this week in practice um, going into your first Iron Bowl? And is there a chance that we see any red shirt freshmen that can't burn eligibility but may be able to help you this week? Um, I don't have an answer for you on the red shirt freshmen yet as far as that goes. Uh, but you're right as far as you know, having guys uh, available to play um, that haven't been in the four games. You know, this wouldn't be their, their fifth game. So... Uh, there is opportunities for that, but I have an answer for you there. We'll see how the week goes. Um, <clears throat> as far as the Iron Bowl goes, you know, I told the players this too. I'm excited to coach in this game. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to be at Auburn. Um, you know, go back before I was ever part of the uh, of this program. Um, you know, the Iron Bowl has been a game that that everybody's watched. Everybody knows Auburn, Alabama are playing. Um, if you have a chance and you can get on and watch the game. You know, if you're coaching, if it's a time that, you know, for us at Boise, we, we had the latest game, so you could always get a chance to watch these games. And, um, you know, it's one that, that everybody knows who's playing in it. And, you know, something that you sit there and, and you think how, you know, how cool that is, you know, to have a chance for those guys to go out there and, and play in a, in a rivalry game like this. And now to be here, you know, I told our players, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to coach in the game. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things about being at Auburn that you get a chance to do. Uh, as far as the message goes, the message, the message is that we have to do things better um, than we did the week before. And that's, that's been the message, you know, each and every week. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, we can talk about it. Um, we got to go out there and do it. And, and everybody that steps on that field and everybody that coaches in that game has a responsibility to this team to make sure that, we're doing everything we can to the best of our ability to have ourselves ready to play. And then when we get out there and play, that we do those same things through an entire football game, through four quarters. And for us, you know, it still comes back to things that, that we can control, that, that we want to make sure um, we're a lot more effective with uh, in the games. And we put ourselves in better positions you know, as we go out there and prepare. So that goes back to our preparation. It goes back to... You know, in my opinion, and I think it's important for, for our staff and players that we have that attitude that we're trying to prove ourselves every single day. You know, and that's, that, should be, that should be the mentality of this football team. Uh, every time you step into a meeting, every time you step on the field to practice, do a drill, um, compete in a one-on-one -on -one situation, uh, work your, your uh, schemes in team periods, you're trying to prove yourself. Um, and to me, that's that's how you get where you want to be, um, and which is having yourself prepared, ready, and, and feeling the most confident you can when you go step on the football field to play. And that just comes back to the way that you approach everything, and that continues to be the message. You know, we have to prove ourselves, and, and this week is no different. Um, you know, what is different about this week is you know our seniors. Um, obviously, the game. You know, there's there's a, a difference to that uh, because it is a rivalry game, you know, and you're playing against a really good football team. But for us, we're always trying to play our best football each and every week. And how we do that is we get ourselves prepared to go out there and play like that um, through a great week of work and then having that attitude and mentality of proving yourself every day. So when it's time to do that on, the, on game day, um, that's just what you do each and every day. So... Uh, that's the message. That's that's the focus, um, you know, for everybody in our program, and you know, something that we need to get done each and every day so that we're all ready to play on Saturday. Ben Durando. Yeah, Brian. I wanted to ask, since you've been here, uh, what you've sort of heard just from people in the community about the Iron Bowl, and if you've gotten a, any best sort of pieces of advice about coaching in it. The best advice I've got about from the from people in the community, 
uh, or other folks that have been a part of it. Uh, well, I'll say this. The first question I was asked after I did my press conference on Christmas Eve was about the Iron Bowl, which I think at that time was about 340 days away. Um, so here we are. You know, that's, that's one of the things that uh, personally, you know, I look back on and um, after I finished everything I had to say, that was the first question I had. So that made it very clear how important this is. Uh, certainly, as far as our fans, um, people that are part of our program, um, you know, like I said, this, is, this game has been going on for a long time. Um, this game is one that, that everybody in the country knows is being played. And certainly when you have uh, your fans, your alumni, and people that have been a part of it, they're passionate about um, Auburn, Alabama. And so to me, that's the best part of this game is that you have that excitement and passion surrounding it. So, you know, you want to go out there and have yourself prepared and ready to play. You want to go out and, and, and play your best game. Um, you know, you want to have an opportunity to put yourself in a position to go have a chance to win. Um, and you do that by, by having yourself prepared. So, you know, I mean, all that excitement, everything building up, um, you know, as the season goes, because you know at the end, you look at the schedule, and, and this game is on there for sure. Everybody's aware of, of the Iron Bowl at that point um, that's going to be played, and this is the date. You know, and as you get closer to it, um, especially the week of, you know, that becomes the, the complete focus. And so all the things you heard leading up to it now, um, you know, that, that's part of this game. And at the same time, it's also, you know, we have a, a team right now that we're developing and, and growing and trying to improve each and every day. So that still is the main message of what we're trying to accomplish is the things that we have to do this season in order to go out there and, and play our best football um, and, and to play, you know, against a really tough team. So we're going to have to play tough. We're going to have to be disciplined. We're going to have to do things that um, we've shown that we're capable of on a consistent basis. Um, and then, you know, the rest of it, you know, that all comes with it. And that's, that's going to be exciting on game day to be a part of that. And then we go out there and, you know, we get a chance to play. And hopefully that's the most exciting thing is our opportunity to play and, and that, you know, we're trying to play the best we can. Jordan Hill. Brian, you talked about a little after the South Carolina game, just what you saw from TJ with a little bit more time to look at the film. Just what did you take away from his first start? <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I mean, I, th I thought he was solid. Um, you know, there's some good things in there. There were some things that, that we got correct and we need to correct. Um, you know, that as we prepare going into this next game and another start and opportunity for him, um, you know, we need to do a better job of. And so, like any other player, I mean, it's you, you look at the good, you look at some of the mistakes, um, you correct them, and it all goes back to the, the, the amount of time spent uh, preparing, uh, I think the intensity that you practice with, uh, especially at that position. You know, one of the things about the quarterback position, you're not getting hit in practice, um, and you know it's very easy to to be a little more laid back uh, from a physical standpoint uh, at that position because you know you're not striking, you're not hitting, you're not chasing, you're not tackling, you're not doing those things that that other players are doing, um, which is in my opinion, for that for the quarterback position, the worst thing you can do is to not come out there with that that mentality as far as just being intense, uh, having a sense of urgency, and and practicing uh, in a way. So when you get into the game, you know you're prepared for all the situations um, that the defense can give you uh, on those particular plays or in that particular down and distance, whatever it is. Um, and so I think. And that's that's nothing uh, towards TJ's preparation. It's just you know the quarterback position in general, and what we try to to help our guys understand is how you get yourself ready to play. And you know he's got to continue to keep working through that, knowing that you know he's going to be starting in this game. He played in the last one, um, did some some good things in there, did some things that, that we've got to be much better at. And you know the progress will be seen in our practices now throughout this week. Um, and then ultimately, you know, we'll know where we are come game day when we go out there and perform. And we'd like to see the stuff that we do in practice show up in the games 
uh, on a consistent basis at that position and everybody else's. Nathan King. Brian, from what you've seen from, from Bryce Young and what Alabama is able to do in the passing game, what are some keys for you guys, in, whether in the pass rush or in pass defense, to be able to slow them down on Saturday? Well, it's, it's, it's all those things. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't think you want to give any quarterback um, an extended amount of time back there just to deliver the ball. And, you know, you'd like to provide, you know, some pressure. You'd like to be able to, um, to disrupt you know what any quarterback is doing. Uh, what I think, what I think Bryce does a good job of is, I think he's tough. You know, I've seen him stand in the pocket. Um, he's taken hits. He's delivered balls, and he's been accurate. Um, I think he he's got a, you know a good understanding um, of what they're doing. Is in, in you know as you watch the tape, um, it, sh it sure feels like he's got a good feel for what they want to accomplish each and every play. Um, where he needs to go um, with the ball in uh, in different situations and, and things that um, you know may cause some disruption. So you know it's not just about what we do up front. It's really the entire defense. You just you got to be in position um, consistently against good teams. And you know if you're talking about quarterbacks in particular against good quarterbacks, have yourself in the in the proper position and coverage. Um, and do what you can on the defensive side to try to try to add a little bit of pressure. Um, and so, it really, it's it's just it's just about our defense. It's about playing good defense, uh, being in the right position, uh, doing what we can up front. Um, you know, being able to have some things that, that put us in a position where we can, you know, try to get after the passer and all that. But um, you know, you also have, you know, you, they can run the ball. They're physical up front. Um, you know, and there, there's a lot of weapons on on that side of the ball that you have to account for. So it's not just one guy, one thing. Um, it's every single guy, and so that's that's what you go through during the week. Is in your preparation is really trying to figure out, you know, what are the best schemes, what's the best plan, and then you know, put your try to put your defense in the best position to be successful against you know all the things that they could do. And uh, you know, they got a lot of. A lot of things they can do. They got a lot of weapons, and so we have to be ready for all those things. Tobias Woodward. Here we are. All right, love the technology. Um, Brian, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well today. Yeah, well, as good as possible, I feel you. Um, with the kicking game, how would you assess Pat's performance? Um, you said on the radio show you're going to kind of go back and forth between him and McGuire. Seem to be mostly Pat, and what you think about him and why you go mostly him? Yeah, well, we could have went with Evan on the kickoffs. Um, you know, we were going to have Ben. I think I said specifically kickoffs there. Um, if I didn't, that's that's what I meant. Uh, ben was going to kick field goals, and <clears throat> you know, we made one, uh, made the extra points. We missed one. Um, so anytime, you know, any of our specialists, we we just got to be consistent. You know, we got to find ways to put points on the board and. When we're in a position where, you know, I think we're inside the 15-yard line, we have a chance to make a field goal. We got to we got to find a way to make it. Uh, ben knows that. We know that. Um, that's no surprise. You know, we just got to execute in those situations. But again, much like Finley and, and other players that have had some opportunities to start and be out there and, and be a part of uh, playing in the game, um, you know, Ben Ben has got an opportunity to do that. Expect him to be better this week. Um, you know, have a better understanding now um, as he's played a little bit more this season, um, as he prepares himself to go out there and play against Alabama. And then, you know, our other guys, too, all being ready. And like I said, Evan's a guy that, you know, it's a, it's another week of uh, preparation for him to get himself ready. And, you know, we may see him um, at some point. Uh, we'll see how the week goes and then, you know, make a decision leading into the game. Justin Hokinson. Hey, Brian, um, when you've had a chance to, to sort of think about these last three um, losses, um, is there anything you can pinpoint in terms of the, the, the finishes and the lacking in terms of kind of falling apart down the stretch? Is it is every situation different or is there something you're seeing that's this, you know, causing the team to just not finish the way you want them to finish? Yeah, I wouldn't say. Um, you know, there has certainly been some moments where 
we've had that um, fall apart, um, you know, drives here and there. So, um, and, and those things happen. You got to overcome that. That happens sometimes. You know, at the end of the games, you know, you want to be clutch in those moments. Um, sometimes things happen earlier in the games. You got to overcome it at that time. Um, you know, I think we've started somewhat fast in some games. You know, we, I don't know if we've done it. Cons I know we haven't done it consistently enough on either side. We have in a couple games, you know, OD playing together. Um, but, you know, really it comes down to that second half um, and finishing. It's four quarters of football. That's everybody says that. Uh, it's truly understanding. Uh, being able to go out there, make your adjustments at halftime, and then, and then executing those in the second half. And um, the bottom line is, you know, we're not doing that. We're not finishing uh, in games, and you know that stood out. So, and we can finish better. Doesn't guarantee us a win. I know we can finish better. Um, we can continue to uh, to play better football in the second half of games. You know, you got to respond. Um, in my opinion, to what happens to the other side of the ball at times. You know, somebody scores, you got to find a way to score, you know, and you got you to be able to get a turnover. Um, you know, we got to be able to get off the field on third down situations. We have to extend drives, um, take advantage of field position when our special teams gives it to us. So, you know, a lot of it just has to do with, with being better at playing the game and then, you know, being, being able to do what we're coached to do in, in those situations and being consistent. If we made it happen in the first half, we can make it happen in the second half. Um, and so to me, you know, when you do truly play four really good quarters of football, to me that's about consistency. And that happens, you know, from being, one, being prepared. And, you know, then I think having that same level of focus, if not more, as you come out in the second half, and then also as, as coaches, you know, making adjustments and understanding where your team is at and being able to put them in a position and helping them to be as successful as possible and know that, you know, hey, there's some things we're going to have to um, adjust to and being able to make those and then that information getting done on the field um, is critical. So, you know, it's a combination of, of a few things that, uh, when it comes down to it, you know, those those few things show up in a big way. And that's what we're working on every day, you know, that we're, we're in this building uh, and on that practice field is understanding that, you know, those are the things that we're really preparing for. Those are the moments that we're putting all this time in so that we can be consistent, that we can play and make adjustments and then go out there and actually do them. Um, Consistently, and then also being able to to get, um, you know, within our schemes and, and some of the the fundamentals, those right, um, going into that game, so that we're you know we're playing a better level of football for four quarters. So, you know, that's and, and at the end of the day, I mean, it comes down to you know just as a competitor, you got to compete. You know, coaches, players, doesn't matter. You got to compete um, all the way throughout the game. Put yourself in a position where you know you have a chance uh, in the fourth quarter uh, to go out there and win the game or to or to you know find a way to to put yourself in a position where you have a chance um, and that's just that's about competition that's about competing that's about having an edge about you and and having that attitude of of just playing um, your best football every chance you get which you know we don't get a ton if you look at all the work that you put into this game and you look at the amount of games you actually get to play, um, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. So every chance you get, you got to maximize it. And to me, that doesn't guarantee you winning, but it, it, it does show that, that you're going to fight and that you're going to do everything you can to the best of your ability to go out there and try to help your team uh, find a way to win. You know, you do your job, you do it as to the best of your ability. Um, and and that's really, at the end of the day, if you're doing that, that means you're playing good football, in my opinion. Um, you're coaching good football. You're giving yourself and your team a chance to be successful. And, you know, that's really all we ask um, is just to your personal best each and every day. And, you know, try to prove yourself every single day. Show up uh, ready to go and, and have that attitude of wanting to get better. And then, 
let's go have those same things in the game uh, through the entire game. And so uh, to me, that's that continues to be the challenge. And, um, you know, it's just it, it's not complicated. It's very simple. Um, but I think there's a there's a lot of things that surround that. Um, that we just have to continue to keep focused on the stuff that matters and, and keep the main thing the main thing. And that's playing a lot better football than what we've had, than, than what we had done um, in these last three games. And, you know, we get another chance. That's the thing about this week. We get another chance to go out there and to work on those things. How hard are you going to work on it? How hard are you going to spend um, your time on that field preparing? And, you know, what are you going to do uh, more that you haven't done. That's always as coaches and players, like, you know, to sit there and think to keep doing the exact same thing over and over um, when you're not getting the results. That's crazy. You gotta, you gotta find some ways to do things better, and you gotta find ways to to really evaluate where you are, and then you know evaluate where we are as a team. Mark Murphy. Yeah, coach, you guys have done a good job on kickoff coverage this year. And Jamison Williams has taken two back for touchdowns, and you got sort of a different dynamic now. Well, Andre's not out there. Could you talk about the importance of doing a good job of covering kickoffs Saturday and also doing a good job of catching punts and not losing yardage on, in those situations? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no question. Well, um, you know, hopefully on the kickoffs, we can get those a little deeper. Um, and if not, guys are going to return it. We got to run down. I thought Jarquez Hunter was really effective. Uh, on kickoff, you know, we had to move some guys around. Um, there's there's still competition happening on this team each and every week. And, and so some guys that were in those positions, um, we had some other guys that were executing better in practice. So those guys got a chance to play and they were effective. And so I thought Coach Watts did a good job of of identifying that. And, and it's the same thing, like I said, it's you we're not going to just continue to keep doing the same thing and just assume that it's all going to work out. We're going to have to make changes and um, that continues to be something on this football team that we'll have to keep doing. Um, and we'll see how it goes this week. You know, the return game and all that, yeah, as a punt returner, you want to catch every punt. That's the goal. The goal is to catch every single punt. The goal is to put yourself in a position where you can do that. Um, doesn't always happen. And then if it doesn't, then protect your team from being in a position where, you know, what happened to us in the last game, um, you know, we don't even give ourselves an opportunity to be in that position. And, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, we shouldn't have been. And, you know, that comes down to details. That comes down to things that um, were emphasized early in the week and don't get done in the game. So how important is practice? Extremely. You know, how important are the coaching points and the things that were emphasized during a week and how that may show up in the game? Um, extremely important. So that's something that we, we got to keep working on. You know, that's a that's a work in progress. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, those things that that we talk about and the things that, that we emphasize um, need to get done. And at least from that standpoint, that might not be all the things that show up in the game, but at least those things, we need to have them show up in a positive way. The rest of it, you know, we'll have to figure out because there'll be other things that happen in games. But the stuff that, that at least you practice, prepare for, and emphasize, that needs to show up in the games. Our last question today comes from Brian Matthews. Uh, yes, Brian. Uh, tight ends did not catch a game, uh, catch a ball last week, excuse me. Uh, is that Was that a function of the game plan, or was that more about um, South Carolina trying to take that away from you guys? Uh, I think it was about South Carolina and probably, um, you know, just some of the situations that we were in. Uh, you know, we were, we were running the ball and, and doing some things from that standpoint, um, it wasn't intentional to not target the tight ends. Uh, sometimes in a game plan, though, you, you go in there and you think one thing is going to be available and you're going to like it, um, and then you start getting to a little bit different groove. Um, you know, and I think the one thing for us, you know, we have guys that, that are able to touch the ball. we got multiple players that, that have their hands on the ball and can do things, and it's being distributed. Uh, we seem to be a lot more effective. So... Uh, but the tight ends are always part of the game plan. You know, they are in the run game. They are in the pass game. It's just we didn't uh, have an opportunity for those guys um, this last game. And that was a little bit of us, a little bit of South Carolina, you know, a little bit of the flow of the game um, is the reason why. And, you know, some opportunities that uh, we did have a chance to get the ball to and we didn't. 
Um, so there were there were opportunities for him. It just didn't happen in the game. So, you know, unfortunately, those guys didn't get a chance to, to be a part of it that way.